Morning everyone, hope you're all keeping okay in these uh, testing times, staying at home. I know it's getting a bit repetitive now, but we have to stay at home. And then the sooner, the more we do, the sooner hopefully we're going to be allowed out to go and do some fishing, which would be very nice because the weather's ideal for it now. Um, thankfully I have had plenty of work to do in the garden, so it has kept me entertained, I've not gone mad yet. Um, on that point, I know someone did ask me for a video about setting up all my box and how you'd set your box up and get everything positioned right. Soon as I've not got conifer trees lying around all over my garden, I will get it done. I haven't forgot yet. It's just a mess out there at the minute. So I'm holding off till then. It shouldn't be too long now. I am getting on all right with it. Um, anyway, moving on to today's video. I'm going to cover my favourite method, it's method I'm, one of the methods I'm known for fishing, uh, maggots and casters shallow. More, well I, I say it's an F1 method, it, it's not, it's carp love maggots and casters shallow as well. Um, it is, like I say, it's a method that I love doing, I've won, well, I won literally thousands of pounds of it last year, it's, it's something, as soon as I know it's time to do it, I'm very happy. Um, so alone last year, I had a first and a second in consecutive rounds in the commercial champs on it. I won a round of the commercial knockout and a fourth, all massive weights, F1s, uh, and a few carp on it. And lots of Ida, um, Western Pools as well. It's great for Ida as well. Um, so as always, we'll try and break it down into a few little parts. First of all, when would I fish maggots and casters shallow? Um, quite simple, as with the mudline one, as soon as the weather starts to warm up a little bit, there's a bit of colour in the water. Um, the fish want to be in shallower water to feed. It's the warmer water. Um, and they're just comfortable there. They're, they're going to be there or in the edges or across on Snake Lake. Um, that's where they want to be, so that's an easy one. Um, why would I use maggots one day why would I use casters another um, simply I prefer fishing casters if I can they make a lot more noise to help bring the fish in and they sink that little bit faster which to me you can help regulate your feeding more because you you know the feet the drop when they're going to drop past your um, where you're where you're the depth you're fishing they're going to fall past that you know you can regulate it a little bit more but saying that that is the benefit of fishing maggots sometimes because like earlier on in the year, later on in the year, and when it's a bit harder, say a festival, like the, the last couple of days of a festival when they've been hammered for a few days, they're going to take a bit more, they're going to be a bit wiser to it. They're going to want a bit more persuasion to come up um, and because the maggots sink so slowly, it's just more enticing for them to come up and get them. So it's it's just about knowing the venue and how it's fishing. What maggots might work better at one venue. Um, yeah, just do a bit of info, find out. Um, but I would choose casters if I could, just because of the noise. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you want some nice big casters if you can get them, make it easier to throw or catapult. Um, I'm sure they've got a good local shop that can do you some. Maggots wise, for shallow fishing I prefer white maggots. They're just more visible for me, help draw the fish up. And that's pretty much it bait wise to be honest. Moving on to rigs then. Rigs are, you are going to want a few top kits I'm afraid to do it properly. It's more for F1s, not so much for carp. but. Um, I've, like I say, I've done a lot of this fish in the last few years and the people that are really good at it, really zoned in on it, it will, it will make sense when I go through the rigs. So moving on to the rigs, here's one that's still on my top kit from the last match I fished. Um, always use a short kit with, just without fat, I don't, I, I don't use a long kit for, for f one in fishing and carp for most of it either to be honest there is a couple of exceptions i'll go into um 10 to 12 slick the old faithful like i say i use it for all that sort of fishing um through a short kit as i said uh 018 mainline 
nice and durable. It does go against what I said with the mud line. You're going to short line and it's going to be in your net. But an 021 with a lot of it, I find, it is because you've only got a little float on and you've not got your bait on the bottom. It, it, it might catch any wind and stuff and blow it around a little bit. So just that slightly thinner main line does help with that. Um, hook length depends what you're fishing for. Um, I'm, I'm basing this on F1s really, so 0.12.5 um, power micron. Three inch hook length, really, really important. It's, especially when it's fishing well and you're fishing with a bulk, you want that bulk close to the hook for F1s. It's yourself hooking as such. It really does help. So three inches. Um, and hook wise, well, we all have different choices of hook we like. Um, these are just some prototype ones, but any medium sort of gauge hook. This has got one on because I was fishing maggots with this, either in an 18 or a 16. And for banded caster, I always use a size 16 with just a small band on it. Um, it's definitely the best way with casters is band because it just stops little fish smashing your bait. If you're slapping and stuff, you're not smashing your bait so much. Um, really, really simple. Um, for the, on this rig, I use on most of them. From anything from like 15 inches down, it's just a Malman's, the midget, the one I help do. Um, I ask for these because I used the Malman's floats and the one we had for this was a slap and it was just too heavy, a little bit too heavy. This takes... Um, Four number 11s and a 12, which I just have bolted at the top of the left, so three inches from the hook. But because it doesn't take a lot of weight, when you're slapping it, it's it's not making huge amounts of noise. It's making a noise, you obviously that's why you're slapping, but you don't want to be making a, a massive racket. Your maggots and ca or casters aren't going to be making a huge amount of noise. You want to be replicating that, so that's the reasoning for the float. Um, for fishing 12 inches and upwards, I changed to a 0.1 MTD um, just because in the top layers of water like that, in the real top water, you, you're either going to get a bite, it's going to go under or it's not. With, uh, when you're fishing a bit deeper, there's the chance of liners and you're trying to read what's going on uh, and the bristle allows you to do that. That's quite self-explanatory really. Um, with these ones, the, when I'm 12 inches, 9 inches, even 6 inches deep, I do use a two inch hook length, otherwise what you'll find, I'll try and replicate it on this. Um, what's that? You're actually going to find your bulk is above mid depth and it's, it just unbalances your rig, it's going to cause tangles and stuff. Um, so just a two inch one, it just makes it, balances, gets the weight down, down the rig a little bit more, which is a massive bonus. And I'll slide that back up there. The most important thing is your length of line between your float and your pole tip. This is why you need a few top kits. Um, for F1 fishing with maggots and casters, you are going to miss loads of bites. It's it's just the way they feed. They don't chase the bait back. They sit at one depth, and you. <coughs> The way they suck a bait in and spit it out so quick, very delicate feeders, that's the crucian in them. Um, you are going to miss a few bites, so you need the short line. You want to be keeping whatever the venue allows. Say so this is um, four inches perfect, but some venues it's going to be six, some eight, Lindome's eight, like decoy is 12, which to be honest is a bloody nightmare. Um, the way we can get around that and try and keep a tight line is some back shot. Don't be afraid to use a back shot even on a shallow rig. Just strung out so keeping the line to your float a little bit tighter. It does make a difference. You want that line as tight as you can. But in an ideal world, a four inch one is perfect. You're going to get a bite and that's going to hook your elastic. And your elastic, nine times out of ten, your elastic's going to come out in when, it, when, when it's going right. Um, and this is why we want a, you want a few top kits to be honest because what you'll find with F1s is they will sit at 
one one depth. They won't say they all day. They'll move around during the day, but this is where it comes to reading your flow. I'd always start off at say two foot, and if you're getting liners, fail lookers or something, just I then just pick my next rig up. It'd literally be three inches shallower. This is why I've got all the marks on my my top kit so I can keep it completely in tune with what's going on in my peg. I know it does seem a bit over the top, but it does work. I certainly wasn't the first to do it, but, and I thought it was a bit of a gimmick, but when I actually tried it, I've now done every top kit, even my power kits and stuff. It just makes life a lot easier for, you can measure out what depth you've got down the edge, but it is more for the, the, the shallow fishing. Um, so in an ideal scenario, I'd probably have six rigs set up, starting with the dibbers like nine, 12 inch, and then, and then move on to the, the midgets, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. They're, they're generally the rigs I would set up. Um, yeah, like I say, you're reading your float, if you're getting liners and stuff, just pick the next rig up and keep doing that until you find the optimum depth. But don't stick to that depth. As soon as you stop getting bites, drop a bit deeper. The fish will move up and down. F1s don't. Like I say, they don't come up to intercept the boat. They will sit at the depth they want in the feed, and you've got to be at that depth. Um, so that is that. Let's say, always start with a bolt to try and get to that depth, but you'll find as the day goes on, that, that spreading the shot out can work really well at times. I've caught really well with, with all the shot under the float and just one little one little dropper, especially really hot days. They don't seem to like the slapping that they... Um, the slap of the bolt so much. It's weird. You've got to go through the motions. You, you want to be, you feed, feed again, put your rig in. But if it's allowed, a bit of tapping, tapping is brilliant for F1. But again, at times it might not work. Um, slap, that might work. It, it, it all changes and it will change a lot during the day. There isn't one, I can go and say, I'll oh, go and do this, go and do that. You've got to keep changing about and seeing what works at the time. You might be fishing its flat calm and tapping will be rubbish. Um, then you'll get a slight bit of ripple or a bit of cloud cover and tapping will be the best thing. And then 20 minutes later it might change again. It's all about just changing about, changing how you feed. Sometimes when there's a lot of fish there, you might find that stop feeding for a few minutes and just tapping will catch really well because you, you're focusing them in on that hook bait. It is all about changing around as the day goes on. Um, another thing I know I'm saying about the short line, but what you can find when it's really hot, there might be a few carp, especially for carp and F1s as well sometimes, sliding that, sliding one of your deeper rigs down a little bit and just flicking it past your feed, that can get you a few extra fish. There's, there's no right or wrong, you've just got to play around with it. Um, all during the session, nothing will stay the same. It is more about picking you another rig up and trying to keep that tight line, but there's times when that isn't going to work either. You've just got to keep playing around with it. Um, what I didn't cover is distances I'd fish this. Ideally, I'd fish it like a top six. I know I can throw casters there comfortably. Um, but again, if you're not in such a good area or the, it's fishing a little bit harder, getting the cat pot out, fishing 11 metres, 13 metres, where you're going to comfortably cat pot maggots and casters, that can be much better, just putting a bit of distance on people around you. Um, or, as we covered on the mud line thing, fishing across to any cover can be really, really good. I've had some really good days doing that. Again, if it's really, really hot and flat, the fish do like to sit away from you and sit in that cover, so that can be really, really good. Um, what else haven't I covered? Um, when you're not going to catch on it straight away, generally, you're going to ideally, like say, you're going to throw, you're going to start throwing straight away from the off. You want to be quite aggressive with the feeding. The way I was always taught with shallow feeding is if I'm fishing at, wait, I'll put that down. If I'm fishing at, here's the surface, there's where I'm fishing. Feed my bait, once it's gone past there, that is dead. It's, 
it's not attracted anymore to where you're fishing, so you're feeding again. So you want to be feeding really regularly. You don't have to feed loads. Um, some day, days it can be brilliant to absolutely hammer casters and maggots in, but um, a lot of the time you're only feeding sort of 20 maggots, casters, but really regular. Um, again, if it's a bit of a wind, don't be afraid to get your cat pot out, even for fishing on a top six. It, um, you want your bait to be grouped accurately. It, it does slow you down a touch, but it's better to be accurate landing right around your float. If you're, if you're fishing here and your bait's going there, you're not gonna get as many bites, simple as that. Practice being accurate. Don't be afraid to get your catapult out. Um, that is it about covered. As I was saying, ideal situation, you're gonna start throwing your bait. You, you're not gonna catch on it instantly, apart from those real red letter days. You, you're watching for signs of fish, either, either some swells in your casters or or some little bubbles coming up where this fish a bit deeper down. It's they're not chewing in the bottom necessarily. It's where they're just sat and bubbling where they're chewing stuff. Um, telltale signs, but on an F1 venue, starting in the edge while you're while you're doing it. Um, a little thing with that is, if you're right-handed like me, you ideally want to fish down your right edge. It all depends on depth. Obviously, if it's really deep that side and you've got shallow water to your other fish there. But it's just so you can throw it without moving your pole about. If you're doing it this side, you're wobbling around everywhere. It's not, not great. Um, and that is it too. Let's say it's, all, it's, it's a simple method, but it's about keeping in touch with the fish. You've got to move around. You, if you just sit doing one thing all day, you're, you're going to get beaten by the people that are busier and, and keeping more in tune with what's going on. So that is pretty much it. I will cover a couple of other little bits. Someone asked about the jigger and this, this fits in quite well with the jigger. I would, I fell victim to it before not setting a jigger up um, along with all the other rigs. Some days the fish just won't settle at one depth and it, it can be good. I don't mean like you, ca you catch at one depth for a few minutes then catch it over. Some days they just don't, they're just like constantly up and down and that is, from now on, I always set a jigger up for it. Um, jiggers I use are just a Drennan inline crystal dibber, show them here. Um, I just cut the bottom off, sand it down so it's nice and smooth. The, the benefit with these is when the line goes through them, until, until you lift the pole above it, it's locked, because it's a small hole, it's locked to that depth. So, so you get in more of a window, you're in control of what's happening. Um, just a small, this is just a point two, a small bolt. Again, you make it because you'll still slap your rig in. It's not making, um, not making a silly amount of noise. It's matching your bait you're feeding. Um, you can see I've not got it on a winder. There's a simple reason for that. Because it's light, I don't want kinks in my line. So I just carry this and some float stops where you'd have above your float. Um, and I, I set it up on the bank, it takes five minutes. It's just so your line's straight so it goes through the hole all right when you want it to. Um, on a windier day, that's just shot with a little bulk of shot, as my other rigs. On a windier day, you need to keep a bit tighter line for, for dropping the, the line through. Just step up to a 0.4 or even a 0.6, should I feel the need. It's really, really good on deeper water as well, the, 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 um, the jigger. I just I just shot them with an Olivet, just because you you need some weight to pull it through. It's for windy that's for a windy day, so you want it to be in a bit more control. And because it's windy, you you're not going to be scaring them so much with the the noise of the Olivet. Pretty simple. Um, I have to just quickly touch on fishing shallow in the winter. It is with maggots, so it counts in the video. Um, something I did catch on a little bit this winter, especially a mild day where you've been feeding out the hand all day or cat points and maggots somewhere. Those fish can be tempted on the right day, even in the middle of winter to come up. It is slightly different rigs we use for that. I only ever set one up. Uh, I'm a bit unprepared. I'll just get one out of my box. Right well, actually I won't. Um, it's, I just use a little one of the secrets, the, the, the very slim float, this is a dusty, but same thing, just with a fine tip. Um, I 
and it should be with like I'd use a, the tiniest float the better like a 4 8 or 4 10 just with three or four number 12s down the line that's it shirt button just strum out for your rig and you just keep laying that in if you're getting liners late on in the day you can catch on it um, let's say even in the middle of winter crazy but they do come up and it can be really good for catching some eyed as well um, again it'd all be scaled down that'd be with midwinter o tens and that sort of stuff um, finally catching carp there are some venues where carp love casters and maggots rookery near me is caster heaven in the summer uh, magpies silly silly weights you catch weights up to sort of 400 pound fishing caster shallow on there and on there you can throw casters and they swirl like straight away um, they're so turned on to them in the summer when it's really hot um, there's a few other venue all the other lakes there you do as well but there's more f1s and stuff this magpie is predominantly carp uh, the Glebe, I know, responds really, really well to casters. Um, it is slightly, slightly different. The rigs would still be the same. Uh, I just fish heavier mainline. I fish 022 for carp. I know it goes against what I said, but um, if you're catching carp on casters shallow, you're normally fishing for a really big weight. They go absolutely mental with them. Um, the only difference as I'll touch on when I do my pellet video, is you do want a bit longer line for carp generally. Saying that magpie will fish a really short line just because they go so mental for them. Um, for that sort of fishing, I just, they, you're fishing really shallow for carp with that. I'd only set three rigs up. I'd set uh, sort of eight inches, 14 inches, and then the other one I would set up, which is the key one for the first hour or two, generally with this sort of fishing, or you're feeding loads of bait is one with like a three foot line and you'll see the carp on a hot day they'll be sat sort of round where you're fishing but they won't really come into the casters they'll be wanting to but they have to build their confidence up so if you you flick in round the edge of your feed and you catch them early on and then move to a shorter line once they're they're there and you can feed a lot of bait with the carp they, they go absolutely mad for it when when they want to doesn't work everywhere though. I've tried it at um, a good example's float fish farm, one of my other local venues. Catch shallow with carp on pellets there. I've tried fishing casters when it looks perfect for it and all you catch is roach and rub. It's very strange. Some venues, again, keep an eye on what works on your venue. Um, that's the only thing you can do. I can't say, oh, do this there. It might not work on your local venue. Some love it, some don't. Um, it all depends on the silvers you've got, I think. Um, you can obviously feed them off, but pellets are going to be a better choice a lot of the time. And I think that is covers most of it, to be honest. Like I say, brilliant method. Uh, you're going to get loads and loads of bites. It's just about reading what's going on. Short line is deadly important if you're allowed. Use back shot if not, you've got to keep a tight line. That is the biggest thing with it. Um, and I'll get a video done on pellet shallow for you soon. Until then though, stay safe, get plenty of rigs tied up. See you later, bye.